this video, we're going to take a look at some of the parametric tools that you've got in AutoCAD. So if you guys have ever uh, created any drawings or sketches in Inventor and uh, Revit, you'll know that you do have these parametric tools available to you. Um, they are available, um, both geometric and dimensional constraints are available in AutoCAD. So let's take a look at how that works. So I've just drawn up a couple of lines over here, um, and they actually are not connected. So if I take a look at this, you'll see that I can actually drag that line off. So at the top over here, the first constraint that we're going to take a look at is your coincident constraint. And what this does, it allows you to take the end point of a line um, and then either snap it onto the end point of another line or maybe just another um, circle as well so that it runs all the way along the circle over there. So let's go and start creating this. Now, you'll notice that things will start jumping around. So there we go, coincident constraint, coincidence constraint, um, you know, trying to get this in over there. And, you know, as well as the lines will also, um, you know, change their, uh, their lengths as well. So this line became a little bit bigger over here. And then, um, you know, just selecting all of this over here. Okay, so it is a little bit uh, tedious. So, you know, for instance, I'm going to make this into a rectangle over here. And normally what I would do is I'd create a rectangle, but I'm just showing you how this is done. So, you know, actually, let's do that. Let's go and create a rectangle over here. So there we go. And that's my rectangle over here. So now with this rectangle, it is, you know, it's, it's stuck together, but you can see I can still change the angle over here. So what I'm going to do is let's now start going and making, I want all of these to be, all these lines over here need to be horizontal or, you know, parallel to your X axis. So what we can do over there, we've got the horizontal um, tool. So I can say, right, that is horizontal, press spacebar. So you can see there how I'm now starting to get my shape over here. So instead of you, you know, sketching and, and it has to be perfect every, you know, right from the, the word go, you can go and kind of just do a kind of rough sketch and then start putting your parametric or geometric constraints on afterwards. Now, I don't really want this middle one to sort of jump anywhere. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the fix command and I'm going to say, right, I'm going to fix this in the middle over here. Okay. So by dragging this, you'll see that I can drag it out, but it's now symmetrical around that point because I've told it that it must be fixed in the middle over there. And then because I want this to be symmetrical, both these lines, you can see these two lines are not the same size. So what I can do is I can say, right, that line is equal to that line. Okay. Now, <clears throat> You know, if I select this over here and I drag it, you'll see that both lines are the same. But I've still got these funny angles over here looking at a rhombus. So what I can do is I can either say it has to be um, vertical, okay? Or what I can do is I can say it can be perpendicular. So perpendicular is 90 degrees. And there we go. So now I've got my nice little shape over there. And I move it. It moves how I want it to. So let's go and fix this up on the side over here. So let's say, right... That's um, that is ninety degrees, and this one I'm going to use a different a different tactic. So I'm going to say parallel. So I'm going to say that this line over here must be parallel to that line over there. Okay, and it both goes down, you know, vertical because I've made it that this line must be vertical as well. So it's going to follow those rules. Okay, so let's just quickly go and um, sort this one out on the left hand side over here. Select and select and select and select so that there's a perpendicular now what we need to do is <clears throat> i'd like the center point of this line to lie on the center point of this line over here so what we do is we can say well this coincident or what we can do is we can say right there's another way we can use horizontal saying that i want horizontal two points so these two points so this point over here must lie over there so now those two are um, in line with each other, and in the same for this over here, two points. I need that center point over here. Oopsie, I didn't check two points. That center point must lie on that center point, and it shifts it down. So you can see how I can even move objects around using my uh, geometric constraints. Okay, so the next thing we we'll take a look at is the um, is a coincidence again, because I want that point to lie on that point as well as that point to line that point. Okay, so there we've got our shapes. Then we can do equal again. So this top line over here must be equal to that line. So we just got 
some nice symmetry going around the outsides over there and then just make sure that that line is equal to that line okay there's another way that i could have done that okay you'll see there as i'm going through there's my equal if i right click and delete so now that will not be equal anymore so you can go and delete these constraints as well so you can see those two aren't equal but i have got an op option to do collinear so collinear what that allows me to do is say that this line over here must be in the same plane as that line over there and because everything's symmetrical around these center points you can see how i'm not you know i don't have to do too much work before everything looks um good for me so if i take a look as you'll see there i can move it up and down okay but now you know we don't have any dimensions so what we can do is once we've created all of this okay so the last one i want to take a look at is just the concentric so for instance if we're going to go put a let's go put a hole in here in the middle we put two holes actually Okay, now normally what we do if you want it to be, uh, you know, center on center, we just move it over there. But the problem is that I can still go and, you know, move that. And if I forget to select the little circle, it's going to move as well. So with this over here, I'm going to go back to my parametrics. And what we haven't looked at is the concentric constraint. So concentric constraints will then go and snap both those center, line, center marks on each other, move the big circle without selecting the, the, the little circle and they will both move over there. Now, what I'm going to do over here is I'm gonna say, right, um, let's go and uh, center this. So once again, I can say, well, horizontal, okay. And uh, two points. I'm going to say that point and that point. Okay, so now that's going to always be horizontally in the center over there, but I can, you know, I can still move it left and right. Let's go to our um, dimensional constraints. So dimensional constraints, we've got linear, horizontal, and vertical. So the nice thing, it's, it's all the same names as you would if you were doing normal uh, annotations. So with linear, you know, select your two points. Okay, and what I can do is, 514 i can say this now must be 500 and we'll change it to 500 because i've made this line equal to that line both will be 500 so i don't have to worry about the left hand side i can just go and dimension everything on the right hand side over here now what i can do is and say right let's go vertical so that point and that point over there okay so it's 1132 i'm going to say it must be 1500 or i can make it a mathematical equation i can say it's it's D1, that's that times three. And there you'll see there, it now gives me a distance of 1500 over there. So that is a way of, of being able to control your, your, your um, dimension. So I can double click on that top there, go 300, and that will change accordingly over there. Okay, D2, D1 times three. Okay, now what we can do is I can say, right, let's go and dimension uh, from this point to this point. Okay, and it must always be, say, for instance, that value divided by three. Okay, there we go. So you can see how I'm now able to control everything from this one dimension at the top of here. Okay, so, and then the last one, I mean, for this one, I would just say, listen, right, two points, vertical, it must always be in the center over there. So now you've got something that is fully controllable through this one dimension at the top over there. And that's just uh, how your parametrics work. So, um, you know, so if you are still using AutoCAD, if you're not using Inventor or Revit at the moment, um, there are parametrics to be able to control your, your drawings a bit more. This, these would actually be used in, in blocks uh, so that you get the most uh, reliability out of those blocks that you're using. Thanks very much for watching.